Here's the question that came in. We are looking at hybrid partitions for old data as a means of reducing our table size footprint. Are there any restrictions we need to know about? Before I say what the restrictions are, I think this is a really cool idea because for, for decades, we've always said there's an opportunity to reduce the working size of your database by putting old data in things like read-only table spaces. And so you do things like you make them read-only, therefore you don't have to back them up as frequently. You don't have to worry about checkpointing and stuff like that. They're out there, but they're still really part of the database. You know, they still occupy size. Whereas putting data in outside the database in say actually flat files or things like object storage if you're on cloud because that's super super cheap then i think you are genuinely now having a smaller database with sort of pointers out to the outside world so i think there's a huge opportunity for read-only old data to be simply dragged out of your database yet still be accessible as if it was there for people for that ad hoc sort of query so i think there's a, a big opportunity here which we've yet to tap into but the question is are there restrictions well, yeah, if you head to the docs, there's a whole stack of them. Now, I should say all these ones seem relatively straightforward. Obviously, you can't, you know, read write the data and you know, you can't have sort of various bits and pieces that would make sense if you're looking at a flat file. Um, you can't have indexes on them, etc. because obviously the data is out there. It, there's, a, there's no structure to it. It's not in you know, a row ID, etc. So all the normal things that you would expect uh, make sense here. They, you know, they are genuine restrictions. You think that makes sense. Even when you read all of those, you think, yep, I'm good to go. I'm pretty sure I know what I'm doing here. There are a couple of gotchas um, that are not really covered explicitly in the documentations. I wanted to put them in here. I wouldn't call them restrictions, but things that could catch you out. So I thought I'd talk about them here because they're very useful to know if you're heading down this path, which I've just sort of endorsed saying it's a really good idea. So let's look at some examples. So I'm going to create a table here called sales. And it's got three years worth of data, 17, 2017, 2018, 2019, um, typical range partition. I'm going to insert huge amounts of data. Well, what have I got? Six rows, but that's enough. But at least we've got some rows in each of the petitions. That's all we need for this demo. We're not doing any massive archiving here. One of the things that it's sort of good to get your head around is a hybrid partition table. You could think of as actually being an external table with some non-external components. What we actually do is when we have a hybrid partition table, the first thing we do is we tell the database, this table is going to have the following attributes when it comes to its external partitions. So they're going to be data pump files by default. In my case, this is where you're going to find them in the temp directory. And I'm not going to build with log files and stuff like that. Now I can do things like this. I'm going to add a brand new partition called sales 2020, because we had 17, 18 and 19, put a range in there, but the location is actually a dump file. It may be a data pump format style of file. You can't actually take a data pump dump file and use it as an external partition because a data pump file has all sorts of metadata in it as well. This is actually a data pump format file, which you used using, using create table as select. But as you can see, I can create a brand new partition, which is a uh, external file um, rather than a relational object. So let's look at our first gotcha. The first gotcha, which you need to be aware of, is just like a normal partition table where you can't add a partition back into the history, you can't add a partition of a hybrid thing back in the history either. Even though you think that should be allowed because I'm not touching the existing structure, because you're nominating a values less than, then that would implicitly be the equivalent of doing a split partition on the earliest partition. And of course, it makes no sense to split a partition which is relational into half relational, half hybrid. You would have to do that manually. Be aware that if you want to put data into the old partitions, you can't just have some data source floating around. So I'm just going to add a partition back in the past. It can't be done that way. You would have to exchange it in as we'll see in a second. So just be aware of that. You can't add in the past. You can only add to the future. If we look at what our partitions currently are, We've got three normal partitions, 17, 18, 19, and 2020, the one we just added is a external partition. And that's why it's read only. So if I wanted to swap a, da a data in, I wanted to take and say an old partition and swap it out with a read only copy of the data. This is how I do it. As I said, you can't use data pump. You just simply create a data pump format file. So I'm doing create table 2018. It's an external table. It's a data pump format. That's the where it's going to go. And I just simply do select star from this partition. So now I've got this partition is relational data. I've now got a copy of that data in a dump file and I can simply flip it in. 
So this is very cool. You can simply say, I'm going to archive this data off. I'll create a flat file version of it and simply swap them over. I've now still got the relational copy if I want to do something with it, but generally I'll throw that away. And now I've got this external version, this hybrid partition swapped in for 2018. So if I look at my partition definition, you can see 2020 was the one we added. 2017 and 19 are still normal tables or normal partitions. And 2018 is now a read-only external partition. I can query this just like I can query anything I normally could. So it's just going to work very, very cool. Let's move on to gotcha number two. Let's flip it back around the other way. So I've taken, as we saw, I took 2018 relational data, swapped it out and replaced it with a flat file. I go, oh, I need to make some alterations to that data now. And obviously it's read-only. So I'll swap it back in, make the changes and maybe swap it back out. So I swap it back in. This is the second gotcha. When you swap a relational segment back in and swap out a hybrid partition table, be aware it stays read-only. And it's just the way the dictionary works. You actually have to explicitly convert it back to read-write. So this is just a workflow thing. Be aware that if you swap in a relational segment back in in place of a hybrid segment, then what happens is it still remains read-only. Just be sure to set to read-write should you need to do it. So just be aware of that. One of the cool things you can do is even though your table is now half flat files, half relational, you can actually put indexes on it. And as long as they are partial indexes, I've spoken about this in some of my talks before, a partial index obeys what we call the metadata on the partition level saying whether indexing is on or off. You can do it even with a fully relational partition table. You simply say, I want indexes on that partition, but not that one and that one, etc. With a hybrid partition table, obviously implicitly, if they are hybrid partitions, the flat files, then you won't get indexing on them and they're indexing partitions. So I put some indexes on. It can be a global index. It can be a local index. It doesn't matter. Here's gotcha number three. If I've got some indexing on there, as we all know, pretty much whenever we're doing exchanges nowadays with um, tables, we generally want to keep those indexes in sync so we don't have to rebuild them at the end. So you do alter table exchange with updating indexes. And if you run that, you get this. It's currently an unimplemented feature. So at the moment, you cannot do a hybrid to non-hybrid exchange or vice versa that have partial indexes and keep the indexes updated at the same time. It's just one of those unfortunate restrictions that we're looking at covering, but at the moment, you can't do it. So what would you do? You would have to do the standard exchange. And like all partitioning things, if you didn't do update indexes, then those indexes become unusable. The global index becomes globally unusable and the local index becomes unusable on these areas where they were hybrid partitions. Let me drop the table and recreate the table a bit more realistically now. This is the last gotcha for this one. Tables typically have things like primary keys. In this case, I'm lazy. I'm not going to have a sequence and, and write my own inserts and, and use a trigger anything like that. I'm just going to generate it as identity, which means the database will create a sequence for me and maintain it all for me. Once again, the three partitions all relational. I'll insert my massive volumes of data again and go through the same process. Let's tell the database how, what the external partitions will be. And then I'll create, I'm going to try swap out effectively my 2018 years worth of data with a dump file as well. So I've created my dump file out there. Here's gotcha number four. I try swap out that relational table so it becomes a hybrid partition and it won't let me. Well, as you know, when you do an exchange, the two objects, the one that's a definition in the partition table and the actual standalone table need to be identical in structure so we can swap them over. The partition table has a generated as identity clause on it. So that needs to be on your hybrid partition table as well. But you can't have an identity column on a flat file. Makes no sense. So you can't do this. Once you have various objects that are, you could call or various structures that are relational only, generated as identity, defaults, etc., then you can no longer do the exchange. That's just an unfortunate restriction. The other four gotchas I wanted to mention, the basic rule here is obviously is, as always, whenever you're exploring a particular piece of functionality that the database offers and you want to exploit it to your advantage, test it thoroughly. Try to come up with all the niche cases that your business will require. If you can tick all them off, then you're good to go. If not, you might have to explore workarounds and see what you can come up with. So just a worthy of note.